Today we're going to be checking out Blue Cruise 1.2, Ford's latest version of its Blue Cruise hands-free driver assist system. Now Ford's just rolling out this new updated 1.2 version and the Mustang Mach-E is the first vehicle to get it. It will find its way into other vehicles, but for now, just the Mach-E has it. And this is one of the few vehicles Ford has in its media fleet that actually has 1.2. They loaned it to me for a week so I could check out 1.2's latest features. So let's hop into this beautiful cyber orange Mach-E and see what Blue Cruise 1.2 is all about. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. Ford's Blue Cruise is a hands-free advanced driver assistance system. It's what's considered level two. There's five different levels of autonomous driving and Blue Cruise is currently at level two, which is what most of the advanced systems today are at, uh, including the Tesla systems, which a lot of people view as being uh, the best or the most advanced. And while they are in some aspects, definitely not in all aspects. And as a matter of fact, Consumer Reports recently rated Ford's Blue Cruise system as the best driver assistance system available today. And that was with the version that was currently available at the time, Blue Cruise 1.0. Now this is Blue Cruise 1.2 that Ford's just beginning to roll out. And it has improvements over the existing 1.0 system. Now, talking about hands-free, as you can see, I'm on hands-free right now. But not all roads are mapped to get hands-free. The way this system works with Ford's Blue Cruise system and other systems like GM Super Cruise, you have to be on a highway that's pre-mapped to be able to enable the system to function properly. Now, currently, there's over 100,000 miles of highways that are pre-mapped for Blue Cruise and Ford's constantly adding to those uh, highways. So if you're not on a pre-mapped highway, Blue Cruise will work, but it won't be hands-free. You have to keep your hands on the wheel. It'll have the adaptive cruise control. It'll also have lane centering, which for the most part will guide you along the highway, but you're not allowed to take your hands off the wheel. You have to keep your hands on the wheel lightly. The vehicle will do the turning and everything, and it'll accelerate and slow down if there's a, a car in front of you, but it's not hands-free unless it's operating on one of the pre-mapped roads, which we are right here today on Route 80 in New Jersey. That's why I have my hands off the wheel. Now you need to always be ready to jump in. So there's a monitoring system here. There's cameras watching me and making sure I'm looking forward. If I were to, for a short period of time, look away, in a couple of seconds, it's gonna warn me to look at the road. I mean, just watch this. I'll cover my eyes up for a few seconds. hear the beep it's immediately saying watch the road so now i'm going to grab the steering wheel nudge it a little bit look forward and now it allows me to go back into the uh, hands-free mode i have a ford f-150 lightning which has blue cruise 1.0 it hasn't been updated to the blue cruise 1.2 yet that we have in this mach e it's supposed to come perhaps by the end of this year ford hasn't set a really a set deadline on it so um they don't wanna promise something and then maybe it takes a little bit longer, but I can't wait to get it on my Lightning because while Blue Cruise works great on the Lightning, some of these improvements I think is gonna make it even better. So really looking forward to that. So with that, let's talk about what enhancements Ford has made for Blue Cruise 1.2. So let's first talk about probably the most useful new addition to Blue Cruise 1.2, and that's Lane Change Assist. With Lane Change Assist, the vehicle will change lanes at your command. You do have to press the turn signal, but the vehicle will then follow at an appropriate time and change the lane. I've used it a lot in the last few days and probably initiated 30 or 40 lane changes, and it works really well. This new lane change feature is well calibrated. It completes the maneuver really smoothly. It mimics how a human would perform lane changes. It'll accelerate 
into the lane change rather than uh, slowing down where the vehicle behind you can catch up. So that's what most people do when they make a lane change. They put their blinker on and they'll accelerate into the lane just so that they don't cause any problem with somebody coming up behind them really quickly. And it's very natural and fluid. It's not too sudden of a lane change. It doesn't take too long. It executes the lane change very quickly. It's pretty much just right. And, and uh, as I said, I've done a lot of these lane changes in different circumstances, including in the dark at night, and it has performed flawlessly. Now, one thing that's interesting, if you try to initiate a lane change when the vehicle decides it cannot let's say there's a lot of vehicles in the lane that you want to get into and there's no opening for it to it will try for about 10 seconds and then it'll finally give you a notification that it's not possible to execute the lane change at this moment Blue Cruise does not have automatic lane changing. GM Super Cruise does. If you're cruising along, let's say you have the cruise control set at 70 miles an hour and there's a car in front of you going slower, it'll put the blinker on, go around the vehicle, then get back in front of the vehicle and resume at the speed that you had the vehicle set at. I found that worked very well also, although it wasn't quite as smooth with the lane changing as Blue Cruise 1.2 is. I tell you, this really is calibrated very well and feels just like a human would uh, a human that knows how to drive a car would properly execute a lane change the second new feature of blue cruise 1.2 is in lane repositioning this is an interesting feature that quite honestly i never really thought of uh, an advanced driver assist system would do but it makes all the sense in the world have you ever been driving down the highway and say a big tractor trailers next to you and it gets really close it starts wandering close to your lane and it feels a little uncomfortable as you're driving well what in lane repositioning does is it will scoot the vehicle over a little bit away from us a, a close moving vehicle it doesn't have to be a tractor trailer it could be a car uh, but uh, it seems like the most intimidating <laughs> figures are big tractor trailers that wander close to the lane i mean they're big wide vehicles to begin with uh, trucks don't have as much room to play in a lane as a car does so it tends to be closer to you to begin with and then if the driver's a little bit hugging the the line it's really close to you so what happens is if you have blue cruise on and there's a vehicle that's close to you that will scoot you over a little bit you'll stay within your lane but you won't be centered in your lane usually uh, advanced driver assist systems always want to have you right down the middle of the lane you want to be you know as close as you can to the middle of the lane so as you're driving in the middle of the lane a vehicle gets close to you on the side whether you come up to it or it comes up to you You'll see the uh, driver's display will show the vehicle scooting over away from the uh, vehicle that's close to you. It's pretty cool. Uh, I've, I've noticed that in the last, say, 20 minutes where I've been driving now on the highway, it's happened about six times. So more often than I would expect it to, sometimes it's just a car, but if the car gets a little bit closer than what the uh, Blue Cruise is comfortable with, it just scoots me over uh, two or three feet to the side of the lane and uh, you know it, it gives you a little bit more breathing room so I think it's a really good feature it's something that I don't think most people will even realize is happening but it will ease the stress of driving sometimes because I got to admit you're cruising on the highway at you know 75 80 miles an hour and a tractor trailer kind of gets a little close to you uh, it's can be a little you know unsettling and uh, you know you'll either accelerate or maybe slow down to kind of get away from it but uh, Blue Cruise will push you away from it a little bit, just give you a couple more feet of cushion, and I think that's gonna make a difference. And uh, it's a pretty good feature to have. Interesting that I never really thought of that, but it's one of those things that you might not realize, but the engineers at Ford did, and they added it to Blue Cruise 1.2, and I think it works pretty well. Now, unlike Lane Change Assist, you don't have to instruct the vehicle to complete this task. It does it automatically and it happens smoothly and intuitively and you really won't even realize it's happening unless you look down at the driver's display and see the graphic of the vehicle scooted over to the side of the lane. And lastly, Blue Cruise 1.2 adds a new feature called Predictive Speed Assist. With Predictive Speed Assist, the vehicle will automatically reduce its speed 
when you're approaching, let's say, a bend in the road at high speeds, and it, particularly when you're driving at high speeds on the highway, and the vehicle thinks it might have a difficult time negotiating a wide, winding turn at the speed that you're traveling at. And it uses the data it has with the pre-mapped roads. So it knows when there's a bend coming up, it knows the speed you're going, and it's able to calculate how much it should slightly slow down in order to negotiate the turn safely. Once the turn's completed, it'll return to the uh, set speed limit that you have set in Blue Cruise. Now there's another thing that this feature does that I do not like. It reads the speed limit signs on the road and it will automatically lower your set speed that you have on your Blue Cruise set at. And what I noticed was I was driving through a construction zone uh, the other day and it was during the day the construction was only going on at night. So during the day uh, everybody's traveling at the regular speed but the, the construction speed limit sign said like 45 miles an hour and it was on a highway that's a 65 mile an hour highway. Now the flow of traffic's going like 70 miles an hour. I think I had my the Blue Crew said it's 70 miles an hour, but as soon as we went into this area, it read the, the speed limit signs and dropped me down to like 50 miles an hour. I didn't understand why the car was slowing itself down and I saw the speed was set at a lower speed. So I set it back up and then it did it again. And then I had to realize what was happening with the new uh, feature, the predicted speed assist. So I have to go into the features and they allow a tolerance that you could set it at where the vehicle will go a certain mile per hour over what the speed limit is. So I had to adjust that. Otherwise, as I was driving, it just kept knocking down the speed that I had Blue Crew set at. It was kind of annoying. So I think that feature could use a little bit of work. But other than that, the predictive speed assist worked very well. I noticed only one time did it have to lower the speed limit in a long winding bend in the Mach-E. But I'm really interested to try that out in my Lightning because the Lightning doesn't handle like the Mach-E, obviously. It's a big pickup truck, it's heavy. And when I'm on the highway, cruising along at highway speed, 75, sometimes 80 miles an hour, I have noticed on long winding bends, the, the truck does like shift its weight, it leans, it has difficult negotiating these long bends. And what Blue Cruise, even when I'm in hands-free zone, it tells me to grab the wheel because it's not comfortable taking that turn at that speed. So that's something that I'm really looking to see how well it works in the Lightning, even more so than the Mach-E, because the Mach-E can pretty much negotiate high-speed turns you know, better than the Lightning can. So that's something that I think um, Lightning owners are gonna benefit from even more than Mach-E owners. So I'm looking forward to getting that in the Lightning and testing it out. So one of the things I did this week with the vehicle was I wanted to make sure I drove it at night and tested out the Blue Cruise 1.2. And I did, and quite honestly, pretty much everything worked just as well as it does during the day. So there's no need for me to really show a lot of uh, night driving. Everything functioned just as well. But I did come across a problem, and that was I approached a construction zone. And as I approached the construction zone, I was in the fast lane. Uh, the fast lane was being closed because that's where the construction was. And as I approached it, I saw that it was closing and I got ready to take over. I was in hands-free mode at the time. And uh, as, we get as I was getting closer and closer, the vehicle showed no signs of recognizing the fact that that lane was closing. And I waited pretty much for the last second and we were gonna hit the barriers. So I had to pull to the right and shift over in the other lane. I made sure that there were no other vehicles around me because I, I, I had time to plan this. I saw it coming up a long distance in advance and there were no vehicles behind me or to my left. So I was, it was a totally safe move. But um, that really was a little unsettling that uh, Blue Cruise was just gonna plow right into that obstruction there. Now, um, you know, I know as we move to an autonomous world, there's a lot of different driving situations that the vehicles have to handle. That's why this is so hard and why we're basically only at level two out of five levels of autonomous driving. And uh, people talked about vehicles being able to completely drive themselves within a couple of years. That's not happening. I know Tesla's talked a lot about it, but uh, even the Tesla full self-driving is not going to be completely full self-drive. A level five full, full self-driving for a long time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think 
most of the OEMs recognize that we're looking at, you know, at least to the end of this decade before you're going to be able to hop in your car and just say, take me to work and then you know, pick up a piece of paper and start reading or pull out your tablet or maybe even take a nap and uh, wake up when you get there. We're not close to that. That's gonna be quite a ways off, but uh, for what Ford has here now with Blue Cruise 1.2, I like what they're doing and uh, the system's really working well. All right, well, that's it for our Blue Cruise 1.2 review. I'm a big fan of Blue Cruise. I use it all the time with my Lightning, and that's Blue Cruise 1.0. I'm looking forward to getting 1.2. Uh, the one thing that I would say that I hope gets improved is the Lightning does wander in the lane a little more than I would like it to. It's They call it ping-ponging, when the vehicle kind of bounces back and forth within the lane. The Lightning is a big truck. It's not very aerodynamic. The wind will push it around, uh, and I something that I've just come to live with and that's probably my biggest complaint other than that it works great I've taken it on many trips from New Jersey up to Vermont where it's basically driven in hands-free mode just about the entire trip you know 200 miles with me not really having to take a hold of the steering wheel at all so uh, it works great as far as I'm concerned I hope 1.2 improves on the wandering in the lane now I have noticed that the Mach-E has not done that. It's been pretty rock solid uh, and, and, and hasn't ping-ponged, hasn't moved much at all. Now, is that because it's a Mach-E and it's, it's lower, it's, it's more aerodynamic, it's not getting pushed around as much, or is it because Blue Cruise 1.2 has improved that also? I don't know. I'm going to know once I get this uh, OTA sent to my Lightning and I can try out 1.2 in the lightning but uh, i'm looking forward to having particularly the lane change assist that's going to be a good feature to have uh, and all, all three of them actually are, are improvements and and little improvements like predictive speed assist are just going to make the overall driving experience that much better so definitely looking forward to it all right well that's it for our blue cruise 1.2 review I hope you learned a little bit about how the system works here. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.